This tutorial will guide you in downloading and installing the QsControl.net version 3.0 software from the QSC Audio website. Of course, downloading and installing the software does not only have to be done from our website. You can certainly install our software from the CD-ROM that came with every basis and rave unit that we've sold. However, downloading from our website ensures that you get the latest version of software. So I'm going to go to the QSC Audio website, www.qscaudio.com. Obviously, you already know how to get there because that's where you got this tutorial from. To get the software, you have a couple choices. You can get it from the support menu under technical support and navigate to the software downloads window, or from our products menu, you can go to Network Audio Systems, to Q's Control .net, Basis, Rave, and DSP, and from that page, you can get to the Software Download section. Either way, you'll end up at the same location. The latest version of Q's Control .net Venue Manager software will always be in the upper left corner of the screen for the latest stable release. In this case, version 3.0 is the version that we want. Now, to download our software, it's a rather big file. It's going to be over 77 megabytes. In fact, in this case, it's 80.3 megabyte in size to download. So you're going to want to make sure you have a nice, uh, fast internet connection, preferably a broadband internet connection. You can download it at 56K uh, over a standard phone telephone modem. However, it's probably going to take you at least an hour, if not longer. So if you're going to do this over a modem, you want to go ahead and save it to download it, and then go have lunch, go have dinner, come back later. But over a fast internet connection, you can get it in a few moments. Now I've already downloaded it to my desktop, so I'm just going to cancel out. Instead of saying save, I'm just going to cancel out this window and actually close out my internet connection as well. And here on my desktop is the zip file that I've downloaded. Now here's a pointer in that when you download our file as a zip file, Windows allows you to double click that zip file and actually open it up and look inside any folders and subfolders and files that are in there. And a lot of people do this thinking that they can then run the setup exe file from here. In fact, that setup exe file is still compressed, it's still zipped in the original folder. It's originally a 68 kilobyte, it's been compressed to 29k so it's 59 percent compressed as are all the rest of the files that are in this folder as well so if you try to run the setup exe it likely will fail because the, it, the other files that it needs are still compressed you have to extract all those files first and luckily windows has a built-in extraction program an extraction wizard so by right clicking on the icon extract all will launch this extraction wizard you then click next and it will try to create a new folder a new directory folder with the same name for that folder as what the original zip file had so it's going to create a new folder right in this proximate location because that's the default setting in this case because it's where the zip file is but you can browse to a completely different location if you wanted to. So uh, if I browsed, for example, to just my documents and said that's the one I wanted to go to, it will then put the zip into the my documents folder and I could get add it further, another folder name to that. I could say uh, downloaded um, um, QSC folder, something like that. Now when I say extract, it's actually going to extract all of those files from that zip folder and put them in that new location. Now it's going to take a few seconds. It's 
as we said, it's an 80 meg file in its zipped format, and it's uncompressing all those files right now for me. So we'll let it extract, and then I can go into the My Documents folder and find the folder that I just extract. We'll see that in a moment. So it's just about finished. And when it finishes, the Windows Extraction Wizard actually lets me view those extracted files. I don't have to navigate to the My Documents and download it to QSC folder. I can just say Finish. It will automatically open that folder. Sure enough, it downloaded the folder called docu Downloaded QSC in My Documents, and it found a folder that it created in there which I can then open up and sure enough here's the files now in their extracted form and if you'll notice the icon for the setup exe looks quite a bit different in this form this is the extracted form the original view remember that we looked at earlier when I just double clicked on the zip file and tried to drill in there its icon is a kind of a generic looking as as are quite a few of the icons that's kind of your visual clue that it hasn't even been extracted yet but in its extracted form I get an icon that looks like this so now I can run this the, the setup file in this case because I've already have Q's control net already installed on my computer the, the wizards the uh, setup wizard is smart enough to know I have it so it's saying you can either repair what you have or remove what you have it's not going to just automatically install it on top of itself. It's going to say you can repair or remove. I'll just go ahead and do repair which is very similar to doing an installation. And we'll see that the installation wizard is putting some files where they're supposed to be and setting up some default settings for those files and basically doing the normal Windows installation things that we expect it to do. Eventually it'll finish installing and it will present a readme file to me this is the the cubes control net 3.0 readme file that we expect you to read this is oddly enough a readme file we actually expect you to read primarily because there's going to be some important notes about this release some important information specifically new features and fixes that get added to this release and in addition to that probably even more important pre-existing or known issues for version 3.0 in this case not necessarily bugs just some method or or properties or functions of the software that people tend to find a little quirky that war are perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with the software but it's just the way this particular version of the software works like maybe you're upgrading from an old version to a new version and you find something that doesn't quite work the way you expect it to or if you're using Windows Vista there might be some issues that you might have to deal with well that's all explained for you in the readme file if you have read the readme file or even if you skip this point and go right to the end of the installation wizard you might feel guilty about it and decide later you would like to read that readme file well once you've installed it, the README file is always available to you at all programs. Go into QsControl.net. It's going to make a new folder for you. And there is that README file that you can then read on your own. And it's an RTF file, which means it will open up in WordPad or in Microsoft Word or in virtually any other text reader type program that you might have. There's also the QsControl.net help file and that help file is available here at any time you don't have to launch the program to get that help file you can just launch the help file directly hopefully you'll see these files in the installation you should see these five files should end up in your installation if you have any difficulties in installing this program to this point if it won't install if you get any warning messages 99 times out of 100 those are caused by antivirus or anti spyware programs that you have running like McAfee or Norton Utilities or something along that line that's preventing the software from installing. We recommend you uh, turn off or even uninstall those antivirus and anti spyware programs 
install the Qs Control Net software first and then go back and enable or reinstall those antivirus and anti soft anti spyware programs. Um, McAfee tends to be the biggest uh, culprit in this case when we find somebody that can't install the program. Once it's been installed properly, you should be able to click on the link as I've done here and it should launch the program. Now in this case, because I already had it installed once and it did a repair, in the repair process it had unen unenabled or disabled I should say the QSC venue service. You want to make sure that this is started and it has a normal looking QSC icon instead of a big red X over top of it. Once that's running I can go ahead and launch the, the program and get into the dialog box, the password dialog box here. Here it's looking for the password for Venue Manager which the default password is QSC. It tells me that. If I've ever changed the password to something else, even if I revert it back to QSC at some future date, this hint will go away. You'll never see this default password hint and you'll have to type in the password unlike now where it's already typed in for me because I've never changed the password. Click OK program will launch as expected. I should see a dialog or a password progress bar go by and now it's launched the program for me and at this point you can successfully ascertain that you have downloaded the program and installed it properly if you can get to this stage. The tutorial after this one will be how to launch Venue Manager and as we just did but more importantly, how to navigate around the different screens and windows that are available.